Video games have always been a source of fun, adventure and creativity, but every now and then they become the center of heated debates and controversies. <laughs> These moments have left a stubborn mark on the industry and its players. So today, I thought we'd take a dive into the 10 most controversial moments in gaming history. I hope you're ready because this is going to be one hell of a trip through some of the most talked about controversial events in gaming history. Now this is probably one of the most well-known controversies in the entire gaming space. Back in 2004, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, developed by Rockstar Games, became the centre of a massive controversy due to the infamous Hot Coffee mod. This hidden minigame which contained explicit content was initially locked away within the game's code, however it was later discovered and unlocked by those pesky modders, bringing it to the attention of the public. The minigame allowed players to engage in, shall we say, an interactive lovemaking session with CJ's girlfriend, which was a far cry from the already mature content tip of the GTA series. The backlash to say the least was swift and intense. Parents, politicians and media outlets condemned the game, arguing that it was inappropriate and should not be accessible to younger audiences. The controversy led to the Entertainment Software Rating Board, or the ESRB, re-rating San Andreas from mature to adults only, which significantly limited its availability in the market. Major retailers pulled the game from their shelves and Rockstar faced significant pressure. In response, Rockstar Games had to recall and re-release the game without the offending content. This re-release was costly and sparked broader debate about content regulation, parental control and the responsibility of game developers. The controversy also led to the increased scrutiny of the video game industry's self-regulation practices and prompted discussions in the US Congress about the effectiveness of the ESRB rating system. The hot coffee mod remains one of the most significant controversies in gaming history to this day, illustrating the challenges and responsibilities that come with creating mature content in video games. No Man's Sky, developed by the small indie studio Hello Games, was one of the most highly anticipated releases of 2016. The game promised players an unprecedented experience, an infinite procedurally generated universe with over 18 quintillion planets to explore. Players were excited about the possibilities of discovering unique ecosystems, engaging in space battles, trading and even encountering other players in this vast universe. However, when No Man's Sky actually launched in 2016, it quickly became one of the most controversial releases in gaming history. Many players found that the game fell far short of the expectations set by its pre-release marketing. Several features that have been heavily promoted such as the multiplayer interactions, large-scale space battles and a detailed universe with diverse ecosystems were either missing or significantly underwhelming. Accusations of false advertising began to surface almost immediately. Players felt misled by the trailers and interviews, particularly those given by the game's lead developer Sean Murray, who had hinted at features that were nowhere to be found in the final product whatsoever. The backlash was intense and widespread. Many saw No Man's Sky as the go-to game when discussing the dangers of overhyping and under-delivering. The controversy actually led to an investigation by the UK's Advertising Standards Authority, or the ASA, which looked into whether Hello Games actually misled their consumers. The ASA ultimately concluded that the promotional materials were not misleading, but the damage to the game's reputation had already been done at this point. But despite the rocky start, Hello Games did not give up on No Man's Sky whatsoever. Over the years, the studio released a series of updates that added many of the promised features and more. These updates introduced base building, ground vehicles, improved graphics, expanded storylines, multiplayer functionality and virtual reality support and numerous other enhancements. Each update brought No Man's Sky closer to the ambitious vision that had originally captivated players. The game gradually transformed from a symbol of broken promises to a testament to the developer's dedication and perseverance. Today No Man's Sky is regarded as one of the greatest redemption stories in gaming history and it stands as a reminder that even the most controversial and disappointing launches can be turned around with commitment and continuous improvement. In 2012, Mass Effect 3 was released, marking the final chapter in Bioware's critically acclaimed sci-fi RPG trilogy. Fans were eagerly awaiting to see how their choices from the previous two games would influence their epic conclusion. Mass Effect was known for its complex narrative and the way player decisions impacted the storyline, creating a deeply personal gaming experience. However, upon reaching the ending of Mass Effect 3, many players felt a sense of disappointment and frustration. The primary criticism was that the ending seemed to negate the numerous choices that the players have made throughout the series. Instead of a variety 
variety of endings that reflected the player's decisions. The game offered three main endings that many felt were overly similar and didn't differentiate based on the collective decisions. Fans took to forums, social media and even organised campaigns demanding a new ending. The movement was so passionate that it included a charity drive where fans raised money for Child's Play, a children's charity as part of their efforts to get Bioware's attention. In response to this absolute uproar, Bioware did actually do something relatively unprecedented in modern gaming. They released the Extended Cut DLC in June 2012, a few months after the game's original release. This free DLC aimed to address the fans' concerns by providing additional cutscenes and narrative content that expanded on the original endings. The Extended Cut did actually make use of the consequences of the player's actions. It provided more closure to the character's stories and explained the events following the final battle in greater detail. While the Extended Cut did not completely satisfy all fans, it was widely seen as a step in the right direction and a testament to the power of fan feedback. The controversy around Mass Effect 3's ending remains a powerful example of how player expectations and developer intentions can clash and the impact such conflicts can have on the gaming community as a whole. Back in 2006, Bethesda introduced one of the first pieces of paid downloadable content or DLC with the release of the Horse Armor DLC for Oblivion. Priced at $2.50 or 200 Microsoft points, this purely cosmetic item allowed players to outfit their in-game horses with decorative armor. While this might seem like a minor thing today, it was a huge deal at the time. The concept of paying extra money for in-game cosmetic items was relatively new and the gaming community was not happy. Players felt that Bethesda was charging for something that offered no real gameplay benefit, labeling it a blatant cash grab. Gamers began flooding forums and social media with complaints. The controversy surrounding the Horse Armor DLC managed to spark a larger conversation about the value and ethics of microtransactions in gaming. Gamers debated whether companies should charge for additional content and what kind of content was actually worth paying for. This DLC is often cited as the beginning of the microtransaction trend that has become an everyday thing in today's gaming industry. Despite the initial backlash, the concept for paid DLC and microtransactions quickly caught on and now it's a standard business model for many games. The Horse Armor controversy remains a pivotal moment in gaming history marking the start of a new era in how games are monetized. Bethesda's response was mixed. They acknowledged the criticism but continued to release additional DLCs for Oblivion, many of which were more substantial and better received by the community. The Horse Armor incident did serve as a pretty significant learning experience, shaping how Bethesda and other developers approach DLC content in the future. Personally, I never knew anyone that bothered buying this DLC, but what about you? Let me know your stories in the comments below. Now, I do understand that I'm going to trigger a lot of people with this one because it was so bad. I am, of course, talking about the Red Ring of Death. The Xbox 360 launched in 2005 and quickly gained popularity with its impressive library of games and online capabilities. However, a significant flaw emerged. A large number of consoles were failing due to the overheating issues, causing the dreaded Red Ring of Death. Reports estimate that as many as 54% of early Xbox 360 consoles experienced this issue. Gamers, rightly so, were so frustrated, and many felt betrayed by Microsoft. The company faced a public relations disaster as complaints flooded in. Recognizing the scale of the problem, Microsoft took an unprecedented step. They extended the warranty for all Xbox 360 consoles to three years and set aside over $1 billion to cover repair costs. This move helped to repair some of the damage done to Microsoft's reputation, but it highlighted the importance of quality control in the gaming industry. The Red Ring of Death incident remains one of the most significant hardware controversies in gaming history. Microsoft's response to the crisis showed the commitment to their customers and the Xbox 360 eventually went on to become a beloved console, remembered fondly despite its technical issues. When Pokemon Go launched in July 2016, it took the whole world by storm. The augmented reality game encouraged players to explore the real world to catch virtual Pokemon, leading to an unprecedented level of engagement and excitement. As players ventured out to try and catch them all, many found themselves wandering into private properties, restricted areas, and even dangerous locations. Reports quickly surfaced of players trespassing on private land and entering areas that were off limits. This behavior not only posed a risk to players' safety, but also led to numerous complaints from property owners and the police. One of the most notable incidents occurred at the Holocaust Museum in Washington DC. And no, I'm not messing, this actually happened. Staff had to ask the players to stop playing the game on the premises out of respect for the site's solemn purpose. Times like this highlighted the insensitive and often destructive nature of players' behaviour in inappropriate locations. The situation escalated to the point where Niantic, the game's developer, had to take action. They introduced measures to discourage players from entering certain areas by removing Pokestops and gyms from problematic locations. Additionally, they updated the game to include warnings and reminders for players to stay aware of their surroundings and respect 
private property. This whole controversy reminds us that while augmented reality games can create incredible experiences, they also require careful consideration of the real world impact they have on players and communities. I want to know though, have you ever experienced or witnessed any of these trespassing issues while playing Pokemon Go? Let me know in the comments below and if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. With that out the way, let's crack on with the video. When Diablo 3 launched in 2012, Blizzard introduced an innovative yet highly controversial feature, the Real Money Auction House. The idea was simple, players could buy and sell in-game items for real money. On paper, it seemed like a great way to enhance the player economy, but the reality was far different. The auction house quickly became a hotbed of controversy. Players argued that it altered the game's core experience. Instead of grinding for epic loot and feeling the excitement of finding a rare item, many players turned to the auction house to simply purchase the best gear. This shift diminished the thrill of the hunt, which is a cornerstone of the Diablo series. The real money auction house had a significant impact on the in-game economy. Prices for top tier items skyrocketed, creating a pay to win environment where those willing to spend real cash had a distinct advantage over others. This imbalance led to widespread dissatisfaction within the community. Blizzard initially defended the auction house, citing it was a way to provide a secure platform for player transactions, but the negative feedback mounted. It became clear that the feature was harming the game more than helping it. In response, Blizzard made a bold move. In March 2014, they announced the removal of the auction house with the Reaper of Souls expansion. This decision was welcomed by the community and marked a significant turning point for Diablo 3. The removal of the auction house along with the introduction of the Loot 2.0 system revitalized the game by refocusing it on core loot driven gameplay that fans loved. After the removal, the player base saw a resurgence in the interest of Diablo 3. The game's focus shifted back to its roots, slaying demons and earning loot through gameplay rather than transactions. Players celebrated the return to a more balanced and rewarding experience. The Diablo 3 auction house controversy highlights the balance between innovation and maintaining the core principles that make a game enjoyable. While monetization strategies can provide short-term gains, they should never compromise the essence of the game itself. Loot boxes. Whether you love them or you hate them, they've been one of the most debated topics in gaming over the last decade. But why exactly did they become so controversial? The tipping point came with the release of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Back in 2017, EA's blockbuster title was designed with the progression system heavily tied to loot boxes. Players quickly realised that to unlock key characters or advance competitively, they either had to spend a crazy amount of time grinding or pay real money. This felt like a blatant pay to win scenario and this was met with a pretty significant backlash. Players and critics accused EA of turning the franchise into a cash grab. The controversy wasn't just about spending money, it was about fairness in gaming as a whole. The uproar was so significant that it caught the attention of the mainstream media and even governments. Countries like Belgium and the Netherlands went on to classify certain loot boxes as gambling, leading to regulatory changes. In response to the backlash, EA removed the pay to win elements from Battlefront 2 and reworked its progression system. But the damage was done and the controversy sparked a broader conversation about loot boxes in games like FIFA, Overwatch and many others. Today the industry shifting, many games have moved towards more transparent and fair monetization models, such as battle passes and direct purchase options. While loot boxes haven't disappeared entirely, their controversial legacy has led to greater awareness and more consumer friendly practices. Alright then, let's talk about one of the biggest blunders in video game history, the infamous E.T. video game crash of 1983. In 1982, Atari was riding high and decided to cash in on the massive success of Steven Spielberg's E.T. the Extraterrestrial. They rushed the game's development giving designer Howard Scott Warshaw just five weeks to create it. The result, a game that was almost unplayable. E.T. was a confusing mess. Players were frustrated by its vague objectives, monotonous gameplay and annoying pits that E.T. just kept falling into. Critics and players alike hated the game and it quickly became notorious for its poor quality. The game didn't just flop, it bombed badly. Atari had produced millions of copies, confident that it would be a hit, but with over 3 million unsold cartridges, they faced a monumental financial loss. This contributed heavily to the video game industry crash of 1983, leading to Atari's downfall and a massive shakeup in the gaming market. And then there's the legend of the Atari landfill. For years, rumors swirled that Atari had buried millions of unsold ET cartridges in a New Mexico landfill. It seemed too wild to be true until 2014 when a documentary crew unearthed the cartridges, confirming the story and let's say cementing ET's place in gaming infamy.
Finally, Mortal Kombat, released in 1992, wasn't just another fighting game, it was a cultural phenomenon. Its realistic graphics and gruesome fatalities shocked players and parents alike, pushing the boundaries of what was acceptable in video games. The controversy reached a peak with congressional hearings in 1993, where games like Mortal Kombat were scrutinised for their violent content. Senators began arguing that games needed regulation to protect children. The intense scrutiny and public pressure forced the video game industry to take action. In response, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, or the ESRB, was established in 1994. This rating system provided a standardised way to categorise game content and inform consumers, especially parents, about the suitability of games for different age groups. The creation of the ESRB was a pivotal moment in gaming history. It allowed the industry to self-regulate and avoid government intervention. More importantly, it set a precedent for content ratings that are still in place today. Mortal Kombat continues to thrive and is now more brutal than ever, but thanks to the ESRB, players and parents are better informed about what to expect. This controversy didn't just change Mortal Kombat, it transformed the entire gaming landscape. And there we have it, we've made it to the end of the 10 most controversial moments in gaming history. These moments remind us just how impactful our favourite hobby can be. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, and if you did, why not leave a like, it helps me out massively and lets me know that you want to see more content like this. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell, and maybe consider joining our Discord. Join our community and stay updated with the latest videos, because you don't want to miss what's coming next. With all that being said, thanks for watching, thank you for the support, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.